Good morning and welcome to Bournemouth for Christmas Market Cast. Uh, and it, obviously, you would expect me to dress appropriately, wouldn't you? And I just want to really just cover this whole outfit by saying it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. The outfit might be crazy, but the content very definitely isn't. We've got a lot to get through, so I am going to tear straight into this now. And I want to kick off with this summary. There are patches of sunlight appearing. There is no doubt about that. The market is better at this time this year than it was at this time last year. There is no doubt about that either. But there are also the big issues uh, uh, around volumes. Uh, and we all know that volumes are way down on where they were pre-COVID still and also this time last year as well. So we want to touch on that and I'm going to try and explore the whole volume issue and I'm going to try and explain why I believe volumes are the way they are and values are holding up the way they are. So we'll spend some time on that a little bit later on in the presentation. In the meantime, let's take a quick trot through the outlying factors that go on. I use the word plummets. Listen, the Telegraph don't have their own uh, option on the words plunge and plummet, which they use in relation to the housing market all the time. I'm using it in relation to inflation, which came down from 6.7% to 4.6% last month. And that really is a boost for all of us working in the industry. Interest rates were held again at five and a quarter percent, as and I'm sure you know the MPC meets tomorrow. So who knows, by the time you're actually watching this, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, it may well be a decision has been made. I, my gut feel says that they'll be held at five and a quarter percent again tomorrow. I would be amazed if they go either up or down when they meet tomorrow. Asking prices are now starting to fall, finally. We'll touch on that in a little more detail in a slide or two's time, but we are finally starting to see asking prices come more in line with expectations wrapped around this market. The nationwide index blipped up again this month. And uh, look, I'm standing here with my hand up as, as the only uh, pundit, whatever you want to call it, that actually forecasts the autumn uptick in the nationwide index. That stands me in pretty good stead for my predictions that I'm going to give you for 2024 that come at the end of this presentation. Mortgage approvals, though, are still languishing. They're way down, sat in the doldrums. OK, in October, they, they went up a little bit to just over 47,000, but that is still way below the normal average in the mid 60,000s, which gives us that classic, that magical 100,000 completions in a calendar month, which is the market that we got so used to, didn't we, in the five years leading up to 2019, up to COVID in 2019. Another couple of interesting things in this presentation deck that I'll take you through. But before I do that, I want to remind you of the three words I gave you. I said I in my last market cast, in my Halloween market cast with my crazy pumpkin shirt, I actually said I'd try and sum the market up in three words. And do you remember, here they were, Apprehension. This is what's really causing problems in sales offices up and down the country. People that are actually in the market to buy, but they're worried. They're worried about the way interest rates are going to go. They are worried that if they buy now, prices might fall and they'll have missed a bargain. All of those sort of things which are making deals very, very difficult to get across the line. I know everyone is experiencing that, but there's optimism. There is undoubted optimism that needs-based market, the, the people that have been postponing those purchases are now recognizing and realizing that the sort of rate of interest rate that we've got at the moment is going to be with us over the next 12 to 24 months at least. And so they recognize that there is little point in hanging on. And there is a general optimism. Wait till you see the new consumer confidence numbers in a moment. And finally, this resilience. The resilience, um, uh, by resilience, I'm talking about values, not volumes, but there is a real and genuine uh, a resilience in the market that we've all felt. And we'll come back to that as well in a moment or two. So what about this market cast? Well, how about this? Inflation overhang. It's what I actually call my Wiley Coyote syndrome. And I think that has got a huge amount to do with values staying where they are and volumes falling by 25%. I will explain what I mean by uh, inflation overhang, but before I do that, what do you think of the illustration? They're all done by artificial intelligence, all done by 
um, generative AI that. And, and so was that as well. I asked the AI to give me an illustration of a swan that looked really serene on the surface, but was paddling away like Billio under the water. Look, and that's what you've got going on there. I'm going to explain what I mean by be more swan in a moment or two. I think that's a really important, a really positive sales strategy to adopt as we go through this difficult winter period. But before we do all that stuff, I want to take you through the normal measures uh, because this will give us a good bit of background on which to have our, our discussions further on. Here's the nationwide that I was mentioning just now. Look at this. It upticked in November. It, it makes the market naysayers absolutely bloody furious. What does make me laugh is you've got nationwide upticking, you've got Halifax upticking. Okay, asking prices have started to come down now, as have Zoopla. But the guys out there who said we were going to get a 30% fall, peak to trough and all this sort of stuff, they are all now calling into question these indices. You can be sure, you can be sure that if these indices were showing negative numbers, they wouldn't be doing that. And I fall back on what I always have said about Nationwide and Halifax and Rightmove come to that. And that, and that is that they, yes, they are uh, um, inconsistent, but they are consistently inconsistent. And that way then that means we can actually spot a trend. So you might not like the inconsistencies that are in the algorithms for these uh, indices, but they are consistently inconsistent. And that means that we can actually look to them to see how the market is moving in a wider sense. And here we go, it actually upticked. After going up 0.9% in October, it went up 0.2% in November, which means their annual figure is now only at minus 2% from this time, year on year numbers, this time last year. Just before I leave this front page of the Nationwide report, by the way, have a look at this little rascal over here. This is the Nationwide publishing swap rates, and you can see where they're going from their peak. In the red, that's the two-year swap rate, and in the blue, that's the five-year swap rate. They also published another chart on swap rates, which I am going to come to, or, or projected uh, bank base rates, rather, which I am gonna come to at, towards the end of this deck because that is gonna have a big bearing. It's gonna have a major bearing on where the market moves as we go into spring of next year. We'll come to that in a minute or two. I've stuck the price to earnings ratio in. I'm gonna put this in every single deck I do over the next 12 months. Look, no matter what the market's doing, how it's moving, this line is coming down to meet this line as sure as tomorrow is Thursday. It, it will happen, it will happen. It will come down, it'll come over that line and it will carry on forever revolving around that line. And even if it's inflation that brings that down, those two lines down to me, it will happen as sure as night follows day. So we know that's on, on, on its way. Halifax, as I mentioned just now, also a little, tiny little uptick, 0.5% for their November numbers. And that brings their annual change now down to minus 1%. You've got Zoopla sitting at minus 1.2 or minus 1.2 or something. You've got Right Move doing the same. You've got Nationwide and Halifax all giving us about the same number. That is where prices have stayed. Here's Right Move. So Right Move for their new properties that came on in the month of November actually logged a 1.9% fall for the month. Now the average for this time of the year is minus 1.5%. So although it's the lowest number since 2018. Um, it, it, the average over the last 20 years is minus one and a half percent. So it's pretty much in line with what we would expect. And it still shows the resilience that is out there in the market. And that means that takes their annual number to minus 1.1 percent. They are all, whether it's asking price, mortgage approvals, sold prices, they're all very, very similar. And interestingly, on their headline page for Right Move. 13% down on sales agreed in the year to date. That's interesting. That's where they see volumes right now. This is Zoopla. Again, look, confirming exactly what we're talking about. This is their annual number now, minus 1.2%, minus 1.1, minus 1.2. You can see the consistency that's here, can't you? Interestingly, Zoopla tell us that there are 34% 
more properties on the market than they were at this time last year. And very interestingly over here, they give the average discount to asking price sitting at about minus 2.5%. If you read their executive summary, and I'm not gonna ask you to do so from where you're sitting this morning, but in here they talk that currently, discounts to asking price are sitting at about minus 5.5%, and in London about minus 6%. I don't believe that's unreasonable. I've been out recently talking to lots of sales teams, frontline sales teams, and I always ask them the same question. Could I ask show of hands in the room, if you want to sell your house for 350,000, how many of you would put it on the market for 350,000? And I promise you, not a hand goes up. It's not till we get north of 360 that people then start to put their hands up because we're the British, aren't we? We never put our price that we want to achieve in as our asking price, we give ourselves a little bit of room for manoeuvre. And I don't think that is a bad number. I think it's a reasonable number. Consumer confidence. I worried last month, you'll recall, because there was this dip in consumer confidence, something that often comes at that time of the year. It, it, there is a definite seasonal nature to this. There's no question it affects the way we think. Really briefly, and I apologize for those of you that know this chart well, here's the zero line here. GFK go out and ask 2,000 people in the UK every single month, and they've been doing this for the best part of 50 years now. Are things gonna get better or worse over the next 12 months on a range of subjects? If the majority say they're gonna get better, well then this line here would be above the zero line. We would be in positive confidence. If they believe it's gonna get worse, we'd be down here in, in negative uh, consumer confidence. And you can see really clearly that although we are still in negative territory, you can see where the trend has been going ever since the famous uh, Kwa Tang Trust mini budget back in September 2022, which saw confidence levels hit a historic low on all measures, hardly surprising. Uh, we have been in recovery ever since. And this line here, the top one at the move, the move line at the top there, Will your personal finances be getting better or worse over the next 12 months? Look at this. This is nudging up to neutral. Hopefully you can understand now why I put on that opening slide that there are patches of sunlight out there. For this line to come from here to here over the last 18 months really is a very definite and noticeable trend and it will have an impact on the market. Mark my words. The blue line at the bottom there how is UK PLC going to do over the next 12 months? And you can see that people's confidence in the UK economy has also steadied and is coming back, still in negative, but a light year away from where we were uh, back at the end of September 2022. The green line here uh, is the next 12 months a good time or a bad time to make a major purchase, like a car or a kitchen or a house. And you can see still in negative, but a massive recovery as well from where we were. The red line, by the way, as I'm sure you are aware if you've seen this before, is the overall index score, and it climbs inexorably towards a, a, a neutral. And I think that as we go through next spring, I think we will see this climb above here and move into positive, positive territory, providing nothing else disastrous happens. Uh, let's just hope not, shall we? Key events coming up then, well, as I said, tomorrow we've got the uh, MPC meeting. Be amazed if we, will see, if we see any movement in interest rates. The next consumer confidence numbers come the day after. So this week we'll see the new consumer confidence numbers out. I will uh, put a LinkedIn post up about those numbers. I think they are that important. And then of course, we see the next set of inflation data on December the 20th. That really is important. After the great news that we had last month, it will be interest to see, and interesting to see now we've adjusted whether or not that is a downward trend. Talking of downward trends, interest rates, these are the average numbers now. It's a really interesting shape, isn't it? And if you look here, these are our rates for uh, two-year fixed loans on various um, uh, LTVs. Uh, and you can see here that even on the highest, the 95% um, LTVs, that is also on its way down. And if you look at the light blue one down here, which is a 60% loan to value, 
that is coming down and touching that 5% even on two year money. Uh, you know, there are loans out there now on two year money fixed uh, below 5%. And if you look at 75% loan to value mortgages, you know, so the best of the mortgages, look, you can see here that this is averaging out below that 5% number. So money definitely is getting more, more affordable. And in terms of where rates are going to go, well, like I say, I will actually show you in more detail uh, the, the nationwide interpretation of the Bank of England numbers on that. Here we go. You can see here where this five year uh, 75 loan to value uh, money is below 5% now. So, you know, more good news. It's those patches of sunlight. It's those patches of sunlight that are out there. Believe you me, this, this uh, market cast isn't all good news today. Here's inflation. This is where we've got to. This was the crazy peak that you'll remember this. So this is uh, coming out of lockdown. This is uh, Russia invading Ukraine. And this is where we came across the peak and interest rates by then were really starting to bite. And this is where we've come down the other side, where we're at at the moment. And you'll notice though that the owner occupier home costs, what they call OOH home costs, climbing a little bit there. So that comprehensive measure this comprehensive measure here, the CPIH, so that's the Consumer Price Index with owner occupier home costs, home owner occupier costs in, has actually climbed up a little bit there and sits at 4.7%. So we need to just keep an eye on that one too. But generally the inflation picture is good news. This is the issue, here's the issue, and you can see these are mortgage approvals. And even though there was a slight uptick in October, it's still below 50,000. And we would expect, even at this time of year, that number to be over 60,000. And certainly, if we go back pre-COVID, where we were seeing 66,000 mortgage approvals each and every month, giving us completions around about 100,000 each and every month, well, you can see where, with the here's the big COVID dip and the spring out, but you can see where the trend has been. So, what's going on? Well, I've tried to, analyze these numbers and I want to just share this uh, theory with you. You can see where we are. You can see that numbers now have dipped well below the 100,000 uh, completions per calendar month uh, and there's got to be a reason for that and we've got to be aware of it. And I want to just take you through three slides in this deck and if you want to remember and take anything out of this Christmas market cast, these next three slides I think really do nail it. This is the property mark data. They stopped publishing it in this form, so I took it in the form that they published it, and I'm sure they won't mind that I've made it back into the original chart that they were doing up until last spring, because I think this, <laughs> call me a little bit of a nerd, this is a beautiful chart showing the market in microcosm in one pretty picture. Let me explain. In the blue are deals done by all the property mark agents, all the estate agents that are members of property mark. They send in data that show deals done at better than asking price, the blue. They show deals done at asking price, the orange. And then they show deals done below asking price, the gray. Have a look back here. Now, you remember we were talking just a moment ago that if you want to sell your house for 350 grand, you don't put it on the market for 350, you put it on the market for 365. Look, almost 40% of deals back in the spring of 2022 were being done above asking price. You couldn't get a house, could you? you the only way you could buy a house was actually if your, uh, your best mate was an estate agent. And look, and these were deals being done at asking price here in the orange. And it's just this tiny little 15, 20, 25% of deals that were actually being discounted from asking price. And if you wonder where the transition in the market came, take a look at the gray. Take a look at the gray. Spreading faster than it is in my hair. And that is saying something. And you can see where the market transitioned. It's really, really obvious. And as that gray then brings us back to, funnily enough, what I would say is something much closer to, to normality, where 90% in their October numbers, property marks October numbers, 90% of the deals done by their member agents were done 
with a discount to asking price. No shock, no surprise. But what I've done, I've taken that line there. So that line represents deals done at or better than asking price. Look, I've stripped out all the bars and it looks like that. Here we go. This is a beautiful shot of where the market's gone over the last couple of years. So these are deals done, the percentage of deals done at or better than asking. Now, let me just apply on top of that chart where asking prices have gone. So I've taken the right move index and I've painted it in on this scale here. Here's the orange line. These are asking prices. Do you see what I mean now about this overhang, this inflation overhang? So here come asking prices, absolutely climbing like a space rocket in response to this extraordinary market that we had in the spring of 2022, asking prices going through the roof. Suddenly, we hit transition. And here we come, down the other side of that transition, the one that we were looking at just now, but asking prices didn't follow them. This is the wily E. Coyote moment. This is where the coyote rushes off the edge of the bloody cliff and doesn't realize that the ground has disappeared from underneath his feet before he takes a huge crash back down to reality. That's what's going on. And let me tell you that what I've done on top of this is I have painted onto this chart legal completions. Ready? Have a look at this. Because that is where the volumes have gone. It's so blindingly obvious. So what's happened is we've got this disconnect that's gone on between the market, the blue bars, asking prices, and the result has been tumbling volumes. Now, there are all sorts of reasons that people will cite why volumes are reduced as much, and affordability obviously is a key part of that. But there is no question that if you've got this situation, this inflation overhang, where people are so reluctant to allow asking prices to follow that market down, well then this is what happens to volumes. And I think now we're just starting to see some reality come back into asking prices. I think general inflation, <coughs> which has been running at, at very high levels over the past 18 months, is actually bringing that affordability gap closer. If you remember the nationwide chart I showed right at the beginning, that line is coming down to that four and a half times uh, income line uh, inexorably, and that is what is gonna help these volumes recover. So realistic asking prices, more affordability, consistent interest rates, that is what's gonna help those volumes recover. But it doesn't help us, does it? Uh, in the meantime, I, you know, I make no apologies that this market cast is aimed really at the professional market, the developers, uh, et cetera, rather than individuals buying and selling property. Uh, and for the professionals, for the developers, right now it's a very difficult time making forecasts and making those volumes. You know, getting up above that magical uh, one sale every couple of weeks, the 0 0.5 um, uh, level of sales. So we need to think about how we're going to do that. This isn't helping, is it? So if you look, this is the difference in average price according to the land registry between a new home and a second-hand home. The latest numbers I've got, unfortunately, are July, but they demonstrate the point beautifully. This goes all the way back to 2001 when they started keeping those numbers separately. The average difference across that extraordinary timescale there is 24%. In July, it stood at 45%. So that gives you a really good idea of where those issues are. And, and that new homes have to come back down and actually re-engage with the market and the market values. And that needs to run right the way through the industry, doesn't it? But in the meantime, what's going to happen over uh, the end of this year, which we've still got a little way to run, and next year, before I give you my forecast for 2024, which I will do very shortly, I do just want to touch on this chart that I mentioned nationwide have taken the Bank of England numbers and they have shown here how their projection for interest rates have changed in recent months. So this one up here, this Mo one up here, was the projection uh, for interest rates based on, I think that's overnight interbank swaps or something, OIS. So this is the mid-August projection over there. You can see that. And that goes down 
if, if you take the number of months through to five years here, 60 months, that comes down to about 4%. Then in mid-September, it was here, and you can see where that ended up, about 38 Then in late October, they issued another forecast. Here it is, this one here. And the latest forecast from the Bank of England for interest rates based on OIS is this blue one here. And you can see that they are thinking that at five years, that's going to be under 3.5%. This is the bank saying this. It's not me or anybody else. These are the economists at the bank. And if we believe that that is roughly the track that it's going to go on, then that genuinely affects uh, and dramatically affects the way the market's going to move. Back last April, this was my matrix of all the factors that actually affect buyers when they are on that decision making, in that decision making process. Let me show you how this has moved. So here were high mortgage rates. Mortgage availability was an issue back in the spring. You know, everything was, the interest rates were climbing. Uh, mortgage products were difficult to, to, to find. And you can see where we were. Uh, and that now looks a bit like this. So you can see that a load of these factors here now are conglomerating along that sort of mid line where it's not necessarily a terribly positive effect, but equally not a terribly negative effect. And they're moving back in terms of their impact. Mortgage availability simply isn't an issue now. I think there are 6,000 odd mortgage products uh, available on the market at the moment. And that I believe is the highest for something like 10 years. So mortgage availability is right there writ large. Okay, the rates aren't where we want them and that is still having a negative impact, but their availability is literally right back out here. The employment market is cooling. We all know that. I said that in the last market cast and it continues to do so. There is still an inflation in wages, but as you know, I'm sure from the numbers that came out yesterday, that's fallen down now to about 7%, and that is following the inflationary line down. Again, good news for interest rates, by the way. Um, but you can see that hot employment market has moved back here. The race for space uh, is back there as well, lifestyle changes. That stamp duty concession now is almost forgotten about in terms of how it affects the market. There is more product available, low supply, high demand. Also, everything has moved back there. Here sits consumer confidence now, just under the positive negative line. I honestly think we might see that climb above that line. Uh, certainly, before we get to the end of the spring, we will. And that has a big effect in my thinking calculation. Sitting up here in that top right hand corner, you can see that we've got financial products, uh, part exchange and discounts, the things that the developers can really change the market with, the tools that they have available uh, that sit up here is hugely important. So they are weapons that the developers can use to buck the trend, to steal additional market share, uh, particularly over the next three months where volumes are going to be low and deals are going to be difficult to do. That's what we've got to do. This is how, in the last couple of minutes now, how I see the market going. Well, unbelievably, this is where we are now. Look, this is the nationwide numbers, uh, consistently inconsistent. And you can see at the moment, these are actuals in the dark blue that sits at minus 2%. The red line here shows you the average price according to the nationwide. And you can see that that sort of sits there, there at about 258 and a bit. Uh, that's where it's sitting. I'm forecasting that in December, we'll see a slight fall in that. We nearly always do in December. I'd be amazed if that isn't how it works out. And so we'll see that coming down to just under 3% for the year. Fantastic. Way better than most people felt at the beginning of the year. Um, and uh, a pretty good reflection of what I forecast in last December's Christmas market cast. He says modestly. But what about next year? This is the really important thing. The first thing I'd say is it's going to be better than you believe. Uh, almost certainly better than you believe. Um, the market has got further to go, and I'm sure that it's going to be a difficult January and February. And I, so I think we will see an overall fall in quarter one next year, but not that much. I think we're going to see our transition start. And I use the word transition deliberately, because if you think about it, our transition which means the change from a market moving in one direction to a market moving in another direction is a enormously important time. 
it's a time of great opportunity. And I believe the transition, the move from the downward pressure on the market to move upward pressure, so I'm not thinking racing, but changing is gonna happen in March time. That's when there's gonna be a slight recovery in March. So I think that we are gonna see about minus one and a half percent by the end of the first quarter. Volumes are recovering, but not to pre-pandemic, not until that gap closes between asking prices and reality of the markets. And I think that the new homes share is still going to be under pressure for that very reason. Think about that differential. So this is how it looks. This is my 2024 forecast. You saw it here first. Um, apart from the uh, sales team that I presented to a couple of days ago, because I actually gave them a little preview of that. But you can see here's, this is only minus two and a half percent, by the way. But here's this first quarter. Here's the recovery starting in March. Here we come up into actually positive territory. And you can see by the end of May, we're down to about minus 1% year on year, but with actual inflation in prices. So a transitioning market there. We will see a the traditional summer cooling. It generally tends to happen when we get back to normal seasonal trends. And again, I've got this rise up then for that autumn market into the winter. And I've got a I've got us poking our nose into positive territory come the end of November. And when I stand here next year um, with an equally outrageous shirt on, uh, I'm hoping I'm going to be saying to you next December, well, look at that. We did actually poke our nose into positive territory. Um, if you want a piece of advice, this is my advice. Be more swan. And by that, I mean, it is really important that as an industry, the new homes industry, keeps its elegance, keeps its cool, calm, collected look, does everything about presenting its products in the very best possible way, does everything about having its sales teams working in the very best possible way, and all the other things that affect its brand. Keep your brand values high. But while you're doing that, the bit that people can't see, the paddling away of the webbed feet is going on under the water. So you can put those deals out there that take you down towards the real asking prices, but keep them under the water. So keep your brand looking pristine uh, and beautiful and calm and cool on the surface and underneath, paddle away and get commercial with those deals, certainly if you need those volumes. So in summary then, to finish off, and here we go, Christmas market cast, no different to the previous 15. I have run over by a couple of minutes, um, but nearly done now. Inflation news is good news. We've got loads of news coming in the next couple of weeks, but that market is still difficult. Volumes are still difficult. It is still a buyer's market, and I don't think we're gonna see a transition out of that until next March. Mortgage appro approvals are telling me that these volumes are gonna stay low, certainly for at least the next uh, uh, quarter. And my forecast for the year then sits at about minus three and a half. Um, and then my 2023 volumes between 900,000 and a million. And then next year, I'm saying that we are gonna see vo uh, those volumes stay broadly similar, about maybe about 10% up on where we are now, but about 10% down on the normal average and I'm seeing that the new homes market share of that will be around 12% in 2024. So every sale is going to have to be fought for. Okay, I do want to actually just end a very quick word of congratulations from the market. Really fascinating that they've got their deal over the line with CoStar, approved by the shareholders now. It will be really interesting to see what position they adopt now uh, alongside Zoopla and, and Rightmove. Uh, and, uh, and in terms of the health for on the market, well, it's a little bit like Schrodinger's cat, isn't it? I mean, until we actually take the lid off and have a little look inside so what the new ownership's gonna do, none of us will really know whether that, cat, or that cat's alive and kicking or is actually fast asleep or worse. So we'll see, we'll see. But in the meantime, uh, thank you for following the market cast. For those of you that have been with us over the year, huge thanks to Joan as ever, and huge thanks to James, engineer, neither of whom have coughed despite it being the depths of midwinter and Christmas, uh, and thanks to Hannah, not with us today, way up, up town, uh, up country today, but thanks to her for all the help through the year too. Have a great Christmas, and I look forward to seeing you in 2024.